The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Straight ahead on Perspective as we discuss the controversy surrounding New York Yankees slugger Alex Rodriguez and steroid use. Plus, we'll discuss the harmful effects of steroids. That's straight ahead on this edition of Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. He locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines a Light, because it might make a difference in someone else's life. New York Yankees slugger Alex Rodriguez has seen his share of controversy. None as potentially as dangerous and damaging as this most recent. His link to performance-enhancing drugs, a possible 200-plus game suspension from Major League Baseball, and questions about his future, as well as whether or not he'll ever make it into the Hall of Fame. Well, on this particular edition of Perspectives, we thank you for joining us, because today we're going to talk about that, the Alex Rodriguez controversy, in addition to the harmful effects that steroids play in a young person's life. Joining us here first to start off the show as we talk about the New York Yankee slugger Alex Rodriguez and the controversy is Bronx Net sports correspondent Bobby C, who joins us by way of telephone. And we welcome him now to Perspectives. And uh, Bobby C, good to have you. Hey, Darren. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. So when we talk about the Alex Rodriguez controversy, let's bring viewers up to speed as to where we are as of right now. Well, Alex Rodriguez is back in pinstripes. He rejoined the team last week in Chicago, and he had his first homestand with the Yankees starting on Friday. And his lawyers are saying that they're going to continue to fight this suspension. Major League Baseball handed out a 211-game suspension for Alex Rodriguez, but he is appealing it. And thanks to some of the steroid lingo that they have in place with Major League Baseball, Alex can play while he is appealing the suspension. So he can play, and technically he could possibly even he, – he will be able to finish out the season. He will finish out the season, or at least more than likely finish out the season. Most reports have it in – it seems like probably November when most of this stuff will hit the fan with Major League Baseball and Alex Rodriguez. And, again, this would be the largest suspension other than basically being removed from Major League Baseball. Most steroid abusers that have been caught so far have – received 50-game suspension, so a 211-game suspension is pretty substantial for Alex Rodriguez. Now, allegations say that he not only used but also obstructed justice. Bring us up to speed. Well, basically, a lot of the MLB investigation, which, again, that stuff has not been disclosed, but a lot of rumors speculating basically what Major League Baseball has on Alex Rodriguez, and there seems to be a big cover-up on the part of A-Rod. Again, these are allegations, but... It seems that there's a paper trail, uh, Facebooks, uh, Facebook messages, text messages, where people have been involved in basically trying to cover up Alex Rodriguez's steroid abuse. And that because he is a high-profile player and a player that has an awful lot of money, it is quite possible that he's been able to do some shady uh, things in order to protect his, his image and basically be doing these steroids and not get caught. Because, again, Alex Rodriguez has never, ever tested positive for, a, for steroids in Major League Baseball. He has admitted to using steroids, but he claims he has not used them since the 2003 season. When we look at the subject of Alex Rodriguez, obviously he's had a season marred by controversy, first coming back from the rehab, then the controversy with Cashman, whether or not he's going to actually uh, be playing. He's cleared to play, the Twitter controversy. For the New York Yankees, where does it stand as far as A-Rod is concerned? Is he a bad apple in the bunch? Do they want to keep him, or are we looking to see him possibly be shipped? I think the Yankees would love for him to be the player that he once was. I mean, a three-time most valuable player in Major League Baseball and a one-time arguably the best player in the game. And Alex Rodriguez has had some terrific seasons in New York. 
But these days at 38 years old with all the injuries that he's had, with all of the problems that he's created for the Yankees off the field, and then even little things like declaring that he was ready to go when the Yankee doctors had not basically given him clearance for him to come back. You know, these are all things that have been kind of strikes against him. And I just think from a baseball perspective and a financial uh, perspective, the Yankees are tired of paying this contract. Now, again, they gave him this contract and it, at the time. You know, you're, you're talking about a loaded deal, the back end of a $275 million contract that he's basically owed another $100-plus plus million. He's making $29 million this year. He stands to make $20 million next year. And at 38 years old, a guy that doesn't hit 40 or 50 home runs anymore, and again, some of that could be injuries, some of it could be the fact that he's no longer using performance enhancers. You know, these all add up to a, a player that the Yankees just don't want to pay that much money. Again, they probably won't publicly say that, but the Yankees are probably tired of paying him top dollar for a player that is basically having diminishing returns. When you look at the Alex Rodriguez, the ball player, uh, many people, and especially here at Yankee Stadium, got mixed reviews. Some people were very excited to have A-Rod back into the lineup. Other people very much a loud, a loud chorus of boos. The question is, most of the players, all of the players who uh, were impacted with the performance-enhancing drugs or, or found to be uh, culpable, have accepted the 50-game suspension. Why Alex Rodriguez, on the hearts and minds of me, why is Alex Rodriguez the only one appealing? Well, I would think, Darren, that there's a high level of arrogance for Alex Rodriguez. And again, that's more of a personal opinion than and it's just based on having been around the team and having seen Alex Rodriguez in action all these years. Uh, again, he's a player that was drafted number one right out of high school. He's been idolized as a god pretty much since a young man. And there's no doubt about it that he, based on his statistics and the kind of career that he has had, he has had a Hall of Fame career. He's one of the greatest baseball players to ever step on a diamond and probably will go down as one of the greatest Yankees. It's just a question of whether or not you feel he should go down as an all-time great because you know that there is a strong possibility, despite the fact that he never tested positive for a steroid test, that he did it with performance enhancers. So there's, you know, there's different people on different sides of the fence when it comes to the steroids. Uh, there are some people that are willing to turn a blind eye. There are some people that will never forgive Alex Rodriguez. And from A-Rod's perspective, I just think that he's basically been the golden child for so many years, except for maybe when he's put his foot in his mouth a few times when it comes to certain things. So he's gotten away with a lot of things over the years, including the steroids. Mm -hmm. I just think that he's willing to try again to get away with something that he, this time I don't think he's going to get away with it, but he's going to try. Speaking of getting away, I don't think he's also going to be able to get away from baseball Hall of Fame writers who will have the final say on his career. Yeah, I mean, the baseball writers have already shown. I mean, we saw this year there were no inductions. Uh, any of the players from the quote-unquote steroid era are going to be looked at a lot more carefully. And it, it makes you wonder, Darren, if, if there's going to be anybody over the course of the next 20 years that a baseball writer could legitimately put in the Hall of Fame without thinking that maybe, just maybe there's a chance they might have done it uh, with steroids. Is there any damage control? Is there anything that A-Rod could do between now and even if he is suspended to coming back that could really be able to put this behind him? Well, I think you'd have to, from a fan's perspective, and again, this is more an opinion, but I think most fans would want to know for sure that he's no longer using. So if the steroid testing is doing what it's supposed to be doing and that he's not using, I think it'll be a question of whether or not he can come back and be any sort of kind of player like he used to be. I mean, he had a nice weekend though, you know, for, on the homestand for the Yankees the last couple of games, and maybe he can return to some level of what he once was. I, I don't think you're going to see the gaudy statistics that he had, but the Yankees have had a tough season, a lot of injuries. They played very mediocre baseball. They, they could certainly use Alex Rodriguez, and if he was to come in and maybe catch a little fire, play well, it doesn't necessarily mean home runs, just – a lot of hits, a lot of runs, playing playing well at third base. If the Yankees win some games, he'll be embraced quickly because most of the fans, they just want to see the baseball. They're not as concerned about maybe what's going on behind the scenes, even though the reality of it is whether people want to deal with this or not, Darren, steroids are a big part of baseball. They're a big part of sports today, all sports. How do you think the Yankees will be able to manage without A-Rod if the suspension is not, if, if the appeal uh, is, is declared not good, he's suspended for 200-plus games, 
How are the Yankees going to be able to cope without him? Well, basically, they're going to pay him $29 million for the remainder of this season. So when you consider a couple of months' worth of work, that's a lot of money to have to pay Alex Rodriguez for this year. But next year, if they get out from underneath having to pay that $20 million, which they won't be responsible if he is suspended by Major League Baseball for having to pay him that part of his contract, the Yankees might have some more money. You know, They'll be able to perhaps wheel and deal to get some other players or at least save for a year so that when free agents become available, they could go out and, and get some other players. Or even just the concept of having that money to pay a guy like Robinson Cano. Robinson Cano is their best player right now. He'll be a free agent. I'm sure the Yankees are going to want to be able to outbid anyone to keep him in pinstripes. You know, the, the moral of the story, Darren, when it comes to the Yankees, is the organization clearly has been the best in professional sports when it comes to winning championships. And no player has really ever stood above the pinstripes. I mean, even the all-time legends that they've had in the past, when they have come and gone, usually another legend will replace them. There have been some down years for the Yankees at certain times, but they've proven that the uh, the pinstripes really will outdo any player that the Yankees could have. So Alex Rodriguez will come and go. There'll be another great player somewhere along the line. You just would like to see him finish strong for his own sake, especially if you happen to be an Alex Rodriguez fan. Some fans probably want to see him not finish strong and have his his uh, career and image tarnished completely. Obviously, thank you so much for joining us and sharing a little bit about Alex Rodriguez. Of course, for if you want to find out more information, you can always catch Bobby C. here on BronxNet Sports, and uh, he'll bring you the latest from the New York Yankees locker room as well as with the Alex Rodriguez controversy. Bobby C., thanks a lot for taking the time here with us here on Perspectives. My pleasure, Darren. Have a good oh, show. Thanks a lot. Well, coming up after the break, guess what? We're going to talk to a doctor who's going to give us the inside look at performance-enhancing drugs, steroids as we know them, and the harmful effects they play in an individual's life. You don't want to miss that. We're coming right back right after this. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. Well, teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Long before I was in Hollywood, I had a grandmother by the name of Estelle Marie Tabby, positive role models, to make sure that I was on a straight path. Big brothers, big sisters carefully screens volunteers and places them in long-term mentoring matches with kids who face adversity. With more volunteers, especially men, and more donations, every little who needs a big can have it. Start something. If it's been a while since you've been involved, start something again. Learn more at BigBrothersBigSisters.org. This was me. And mom and dad. And my big brother Alex. And Jack. And this was the day that I learned that sandals get their name from sand. That jellyfish aren't made of jelly. That stars don't just come from the sky. That the ocean is bigger than all of us. This is the day we all got to forget that I was sick. And it changed everything. This was my wish. Back here on Perspectives, Darren Jaime here with you, and we're continuing our conversation talking about the Alex Rodriguez controversy and his alleged use of performance-enhancing drugs. Major League Baseball suspending him for 214 games. That's the suspension that's been handed down by Major League Baseball. Rodriguez is appealing the suspension and will be allowed to play out the rest of the season uh, with the final details probably be hashed out in November. But moving on to a different front, we want to talk about the use of performance-enhancing drugs. Everybody talks about A-Rod, but we want to talk right now for uh, those people who have the ability to see, hear, and listen to know a little bit more about steroids, performance-enhancing drugs, and the harmful effects it plays on an individual's lives. And we know that uh, many young people try to mirror and be 
like those professional athletes, and they do what athletes do. They wear what they wear. They act how they act. They take their mannerisms on. But some of the characteristics don't need to be taken on, and particularly that of steroid use. So here on Perspectives, we're pleased to be joined by Dr. Tony Wanick, who is the uh, orthopedic surgeon at Montefiore Medical Center. He is very familiar with performance-enhancing drugs and steroids. And Dr. Wanick, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, Darren. Great, great to have you. So I, I really want to take the time out because everybody talks about A-Rod. Sure. And I always want to come from a different perspective because I think there are kids out there that are watching. Right. So first of all, for those who don't know a little bit about performance-enhancing drugs, can you give us a little bit about exactly what do they do? Sure. Um, so there, there's different categories of performance enhancing drugs, but the biggest category are uh, steroids, um, the most common one, which is testosterone. Um, they basically help to um, increase your lean muscle mass, um, increase your um, stamina, uh, and increase your um, uh, ability to um, bulk up and uh, gain speed and strength. Mm. So we're seeing more and more athletes getting caught using these performance enhancing drugs. Okay. Some people are saying, you know, Okay, what's the big deal? What is the big deal? Yeah, it's a, it's a big issue, and um, you mentioned before um, that uh, first off that more and more kids are using it. Um, there's um, been some data that shows that uh, approximately five percent of high school students uh, have used some steroids uh, during their time in high school. So it's definitely becoming more of an epidemic, and um, it's uh, a huge problem, especially in that young population, because of uh, a number of issues. Um, the big one, especially for a young person, it actually can, can stunt your growth, can, can stop uh, your full potential. Um, more, more concerning is that it can affect your heart, can affect your liver, and, and cause significant long-term problems. Um, you know, these, um, there's some other um, things besides steroids which people are using, like human growth hormone, HGH. Uh, and there's some concern that it actually may increase your risk for, for cancer down the road um, because it is a, a compound which stimulates growth uh, and that stimulates growth of everything, not just muscle, but potentially um, harmful tumors in the body. So um, there's a lot of um, negative side effects which uh, people aren't, aren't fully aware of and, and they, don't, they hear all the sort of, they see the, the rapid effects of you know, this, this big weight gain, this big muscle mass. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the, the side effects don't come to play till, till later on. Mm -hmm. We see many times in just regular settings, in, in the health settings, in the medical field, uh, grandma, she can be using steroids as a medicine. Uh, but then again, you see A-Rod and other people who've been alleged and linked to right. it. What's the difference between the steroids that we might see mom, grandma, uncle, grandpa do, and then the ones that we're talking about with these, with these, with these athletes? Sure. Um, that's a good good question. There's a, a wide sort of variety of steroids. Um, the ones um, most commonly used in medicine um, uh, are, are used more for anti-inflammatory purposes. So you commonly use steroids for asthma flare-ups, um, for certain autoimmune conditions. Um, the ones which with athletes are using are, are anabolic steroids, steroids which um, really are geared more towards, um, once again, building bulk, building mass. Um, and the um, issue is that uh, you know when uh, grandma uses steroid, it's for a very short period of time, because uh, even those steroids, if used for excessively long period, can can lead to significant consequences or side mm -hmm. effects. Um, the the other difference besides the type of steroids is is the you know, I mentioned the duration, but also the quantity that people are using. You know, to really achieve a response, you know, these people are using really super physiological doses, you know, more than obviously mm -hmm. the body was ever uh, designed to, to, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why we're seeing all these side effects, you know, um, the, the ones that, um, you know, um, sort of gain a lot of attention where, um, you know, people, men start to, to grow breast basically, um, develop issues with acne, um, actually have um, problems with, with sexual dysfunction, you know, where, um, it's true, your, your testicles do shrink because of, of steroid use. And people have tried to combat them by mixing other drugs on top of that, you know, but that introduces a whole new host of, of, of issues. Mm -hmm. 
How aware do you think that particularly young people, that young, that youthful population, the one that is of influence right now, how do you, how, how, how much do you think they're really aware of the harmful side effects? We hear people say, look, don't do it. Do you think that they're really aware of the harmful side effects? Yeah, I, I, I no, I don't think they are, you know, because, um, you know, once again, I think today's generation is all about sort of instant gratification and, you know, uh, you, you get to see the benefits of steroid use the early on, the, 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 the bulk, the, the fact that you're performing better, the fact that you look better, you know, you see that right away. Um, and, and that sort of overshadows that, that potential. Nobody ever thinks about the, the long-term consequences. And I think the, the other issue is that we, we really haven't, uh, there hasn't been that much press regarding the long-term issues or consequences. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, a perfect example is, is, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, uh, you got a guy who, you know, former Mr. Universe, you mm. know, huge bodybuilder and, you know, performance enhancing drugs w were part of his career at, at one point. Right. He admitted to it. And, you know, but if you, you know, nobody remembers or maybe uh, pays attention, but, you know, he had, he had renal failure. His, his kidneys shut down, you know, and, and um, there's suggestion that some of that was linked to his long-term steroid use. Um, so we, you know, we, we see the picture of, of you know, Schwarzenegger and how big and how jacked he looks, but you, you don't realize that, you know, for a while he was on dialysis because right. his, his kidneys shut down. So um, I think you're, you're absolutely right. The, the youth does not realize the, the, the potential and permanent consequences that, uh, that steroid mm -hmm. use can have you had cause. The, have, have you had the misfortune of having to deal with people who've had steroid use? I have, you know, and for me, um, the, the biggest issue I see is that there is an increased risk of uh, tendon ruptures with steroid use. Uh, so um, I've seen a number of people who have ruptured tricep tendon, ruptured patella tendons, uh, ruptured Achilles tendons um, related to steroid use. Um, it's a combination of, of, number one, the steroids weaken the tendons, uh, and number two, because of that added muscle bulk, you know, the tendons just can't withstand that force, and so they literally just rip because you're almost too strong. Right. Um, and, you know, the unfortunate thing is that a lot of those injuries are, are career-ending injuries. Um, and um, uh, once again, it's, um, the, the, you're making people stronger than they were ever intended Tended to be. To be. Tended so. to be. Once you get involved, how addictive are these steroids because you know you hear these athletes say well I only use it for a little bit of time but the underlying tell that we're getting from some of them is that yes it's addictive it's hard you know I mean it's um, if, if, if there's this pill that you could take that that just made you better it, it's hard to get away from that you know and and there's no question that there's a, a significant drop in a person's performance or at least their perception of performance after they stop mm -hmm. and especially for these high-level athletes, they're competitive. They'll do whatever it takes to, to have that edge, to, to perform, perform at, at that level. Mm -hmm. um, so it is uh, something that's hard to say that, you know, you're you know, hitting, you know, 50, 60 home runs a season and you get off steroids and you're down to, you know, hitting 20 home runs a season. That's a, that's a, that's a big hurt. So, All right, stay with us. Coming back after the break, we're going to talk more with the doctor. We're going to find out more about testing. And uh, how can you test to actually find out whether or not somebody's actually using steroids? Is that... Uh, something that goes on at the younger level, and uh, we'll talk more about these harmful effects that you want to know about right here on Perspective. Stay with us. We're coming right back right after this. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I, Cruz Zinker Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah. worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. You know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Back here on Perspectives, continuing our conversation with Dr. Tony Wanak, who is the orthopedic surgeon at Montefiore Medical Center, talking about the negative and harmful effects of steroid use. 
This is, of course, is uh, spurred by the recent allegations that have come to light with Alex Rodriguez and his 214-game suspension for alleged use of performance-enhancing drugs. And we were talking about the harmful effects of steroids and how it really plays out in the life of young people. And so, uh, Doctor, let's go to the testing component. When you talk about testing for these performance-enhancing drugs, we know the major leagues can do that at a high level. They've got the money. They've got the dollars. What about the local level, like the, the high schools and the colleges? Uh, how well can, they, can a college or a high school be able to test and find out whether or not their kids are using it? Sure. Uh, it's a good point. The, um, at the high school level, uh, there, there is really no testing. Mm. Um, and, and part of the reason is uh, a lot of this testing can be uh, fairly expensive. Um, people have gotten smarter and smarter about circumventing um, previous testing methods, you know, where you could, you know, take a urine sample and send it off the f for a fairly inexpensive test. Um, that's gotten harder and harder to do um, uh, because I mentioned before, a lot of people will take additional drugs to sort of mask the effects of steroids. Uh, and, and so, you know, um, I think you and Bob C. had mentioned before that, you know, Alex Rodriguez had, has never tested positive right. for steroids. Um, and, and part of that is they can cycle the steroids, so you can miss it during a testing period, um, or, um, like I said, use one of these masking agents so that the effects don't appear. There's some sort of newer test um, uh, uh, which um, can detect it, um, but they're much, much more expensive, and right now they're still not as reliable. So mm -hmm. um, it is very easy to uh, create a, a sort of a, a false negative test. What help could be out there, because we get ready to close, but what help could be out there for somebody that might say, listen, you know what, I'm watching this show. I got to admit it. I'm using. Really want to get off. I see the harmful effects. What could I do? I mean, the, the first step is just to, to speak with your, your primary care doctor. So um, as a, uh, for a young patient or a young athlete, speak with your pediatrician. Um, we have a, a sports hot, hotline at Montefiore, um, and um, we can get you right in um, and plug in with our um, not just our sports doctors, but our primary care doctors and our endocrinologists because um, and, and help you get off the, the performance enhancing drugs before you um, have these sort of long-term permanent consequences. Definitely. So we want you to get in touch. And uh, Dr. Tony Wanick is over at the Montefiore Medical Center. And thank you so much for coming and sharing with us and giving us the, the, the real deal uh, on these performance enhancing drugs that I really think is playing out not just at the major league level, but as we know, even down to the high school and college level. So thank you so much for sharing with no us. No problem. Thanks so much, there. All righty. Well, that about wraps it up for this edition of Perspectives. We invite you to stay tuned to Perspectives. You can check us out on our Facebook page, and then also you can hit us up on Twitter. There you can find out about some past episodes, see what's coming up in the future, and most of all, you get the opportunity to share your perspective. For all of us here on the set of Perspectives, I'm Darren Jaime. Until the next time we meet, stay safe and also share your perspective. It might make a difference in someone else's life. Take care. Say you don't go anywhere. We gotta Look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner we...